In the 2001 Hollywood movie Enemy at the Gates, which was based on William Craig's 1973 novel Enemy at the Gates, The Battle for Stalingrad, a story is told of the true events surrounding two expert snipers on opposing sides, stalking each other through the Dantesque mayhem and horrors of the Battle of Stalingrad at the height of the Second World War. When I discovered this movie by chance and watched it for the first time, for some inexplicable reason it affected me deeply. However, I was unsure why. There was something more to the story than a well-made and acted psychological war thriller. It was not until viewing the movie for a third time that I come to realise that this cinematic portrayal was a powerful metaphor for sorcery and magic told through the visual moving imagery of combat and suspense. This coincided with a period in my life when I became deeply entrenched into the study and the history of the occult, a subject which has fascinated me for most of my life. This renewal of my interest in the occult and arcane sciences came from several interesting and strange prophecies or predictions which had manifested from within my subconscious as a direct result of various artwork I had created or from startlingly prophetic dreams which I had experienced over the years. It just so happened that during the same period I was reading Carl Jung's paper on synchronicity, which is the conceptual relationship of minds defined as the relationship between ideas being intricately structured in its own logical way and gives rise to relationships that are not casual in nature. These relationships can manifest themselves as simultaneous occurrences and then they become meaningfully related. Suddenly the movie Enemy at the Gates was taking on a whole new meaning the more I looked into it and the underlying themes contained therein. The two opposing actors playing the roles of the real-life dueling snipers on which the story is based, Jude Law and Ed Harris, could be viewed in the context of rival magicians from two warring schools of esoteric magic, National Socialism, Aristophy, and com Communism, Spiritualism, battling for domination on the banks of the River Volga. The sniper's rifles themselves represented the symbolism of magical wands unleashing their deadly force on anyone whom the extremely skillful magicians, in this case snipers, desired. The image of the sniper placing his eye to the rifle scope to take aim could even be interpreted as a metaphor for the all-seeing eye of Horus or the destructive blinking eye of the Hindu deity Shiva. Everything from the materials used to construct the rifles to the alchemical transformation of substances and gases inside the rifles as they were fired represented an assemblage of forces and intentions towards a desired result. The end result in this case being horror and death, both in real life and then later by the technological ability to create movies in a darkened cinema and home theatres of most suburban homes. Even the original blueprint sketch made by the inventor and the designer of these firearms was a work of magic in itself. We may commonly call it an, an amalgamation of engineering, craftsmanship, innovation, professional military training, along with skillful mastery of the weapons themselves, not to mention slaughter and death by their implementation. But it is still magic by the strictest definition of the term. And more importantly, the people who control Hollywood and mass media today no, they are creating magic. They have you under their spell. They have done this so effectively, either by design or subconsciously, that most of us are not even aware of it. We've all been bewitched by movie magic. More importantly, we have been under the spell of the art since the first spark of creative intent took seed in the minds and souls of the earliest humans. All the great artists, musicians, writers, poets and so on fully understand that they are involved in a magical process. Whether they are consciously aware of the underlying esoteric aspect of the creative process is irrelevant. Any true artist will freely admit that their pen, paintbrush, chisel, camera or musical instrument is a device to create a magical intention and thereby bring this intent into existence. Artists who are not aware of this element of their creative lives are not artists in the truest sense. For this is the very essence of the art. We must look at the definition of the term magic. Magic or sorcery is a practice of the conscious manipulation and or suggestion to, to achieve a desired result. That's it. That is what magic is. 
If you're a carpenter and you design a bookshelf on a sheet of paper with a pencil and you build the bookshelf from your plans, you are involved in magic. Anyone who partakes in the creative process, any creative process, is a magician. For century, magic itself and the practice of ritual occult magic in particular was simply known as the art. From the earliest artists moving red ochre across a granite cave wall where no natural sunlight penetrated, to the current Hollywood directors and studios with their armies of actors, movie technicians, computer generated visions and illusions, this has all been and still remains magic and sorcery. A writer, when she or he or she creates a word, spells that word. When you spell a word in a sentence, you are literally doing that. You are casting a spell. How often have we heard the phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword? How many individuals, organizations, and even entire countries have been destroyed based on the words spelled out on a page in the form of a brilliant satire, propaganda, or a manifesto? The power and consequences of practicing the art, both on a conscious and subconscious level, has been profoundly important in the development and tragically in recent centuries the degradation of humanity. In fact, I would wager that it may well be the most important element of the human condition and what ultimately separates us from all animals, including the nearest primates, which are almost genetically identical to humans. The first people who took up red clay and drew a picture, glyph, or even a line stroke may well have implemented the true evolution of the human being to what we have become today. At that point, magic was born. At that point, men became gods.